At the beginning of the 20th century, Britain is preeminent among seafaring nations. Never has the world seen such an empire built almost entirely on sea power alone. Across the Atlantic lies Canada. On the other side of the world, Australia and New Zealand. And in between lie countless territories in Africa and the Middle East. The British Empire. The Royal Navy is the chief instrument of the Pax Britannica. It has acquired a mystique a glamour, a reputation for infallibility. However, Britain's maritime supremacy faces a challenge. In Germany, Alfred von Tirpitz convinces his envious and megalomaniac monarch, Kaiser Wilhelm, to build a high seas fleet to challenge the Royal Navy, if not on a global scale, at least for domination of the North Sea. But he has not reckoned on the determination of Britain's first sea lord, Jack Fisher, a charismatic and energetic admiral who passionately believes in the importance of maintaining superiority at almost any cost. In 1906, he reveals the masterpiece of his vision, the battleship Dreadnought. At a stroke, all existing battleships are rendered obsolete costing more than 1.8 million pounds each. The new dreadnoughts are powered by steam turbines, which are much lighter than their coal-burning predecessors. Consequently, the dreadnoughts carry more than twice the armament. They are the manifestation of the big gun concept. 10 12-inch guns mounted in twin turrets. As well as firing an eight-gun broadside, they can fire six guns forward or aft. Even larger ships soon follow as nations compete in the first arms race of the new century. In 1912, HMS Lion is launched. At 700 feet in length and with 70,000 horsepower turbines, she is the largest, fastest, and at just over two million pounds, the most expensive ship in the world. Even this is soon surpassed by the mighty Super Dreadnought, the Queen Elizabeth-class battleships, they boast eight 15-inch guns in two turrets forward and aft. Their hulls are armored with 13-inch plate, and yet they are capable of 24 knots. Her turbines fed for the first time by oil-fired boilers. In 